for ages, we've relied on our fair share of instinct, wired probes, and sometimes even a hope and a prayer when cooking, or more importantly, when keeping tabs of our meats, our ribs, pork chops, hot wings, whether they be on the barbie, in the oven, on the smoker, wherever. And then new brands came along promising greater accuracy with predictive algorithms and wireless connectivity and all that. And one such company that has been doing this long enough is Aption Labs from the UK. Their OG wireless meat probe, the Meter, was a hit, but had its own drawbacks. Now, fast forward five years, the competition has moved on, but Aption Labs, now part of Traeger, yes, that Traeger, is giving us an upgrade with this, the Meter 2 Plus. My family has been using this for the past couple months and TLDR guys, this is my favorite and most used kitchen gadget of the year, hands down. Let's find out what the flash is all about. Let's go. The Aption Labs Meter 2 Plus Probe retails for $130 and has Bluetooth 5.2 with long range coded five protocol. That's just fancy marketing speak for Bluetooth 5.2 LE or low energy and we'll check out the range later on in the show. Construction wise, stainless steel shaft with a zirconia a band right here for the comms antenna and max uh, ambient temperature limit guys, check this out, is a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, a thousand degrees while the internal temps tops out at 221 degrees. I can't wait to test that out. Uh, also, what I can't wait to test out is the six sensors on board. There's five at the bottom right here. I think it's within an inch to two inches from the bottom. And then we have the ambient uh, temperature, which is just like the first gen, but in a thinner design. The first gen was dual sensors in case uh, you don't remember. Also new is fast charging. So when you plug it in into or pop it into the charger, it takes uh, gives you about two hours of cook for a five minute worth of charge. Or if you dump it in here for 15 minutes, it nets you 12 hours of cook time, which is pretty darn awesome. The shaft on this Gen 2 has taken a significant diet over the previous model. It's a 33% reduction in thickness at five millimeters across on the business end of this thing. And for those of you like myself who don't own the first gen, all that matters is this thing is still fantastic to grip, it's easy to remove, and it also creates a smaller piercing through whatever slab of meat you're using it with. So the sensors are located, as I mentioned before, in two spots. The five sensors for measuring meat temperatures internally all the way up to the surface or close to the surface are located right around here, as well as one ambient temperature that doesn't take, this is a common misconception, that doesn't take temperatures of like say the oven or the grill, but really more of the temperature around the surface of the meat uh, and in that general vicinity. So something to bear in mind and that's what the app uses to calculate combined with all the sensors together uh, to calculate the cook times and things like that. Now the charging block itself, this thing is also a big change from the previous model. It's really well done. It's all bamboo and has also a non-slip foot at the back and you can just pop it open by just pressing this, the battery compartment. And it's a AAA battery, easy to replace and easy to upkeep as well. Um, and the previous model had this check battery button right here, but now it's different. So when you remove it from the dock, it will do its own battery check. You see the green light that's for charging. So when you remove it, if it's low battery, it will, do, it will show a different color and things like that. Right now it's full. So uh, at least some people who are wondering, hey, where's the check button? That's the new function they built into it. And because the block is basically the transmitter between uh, the probe and your phone, you want to keep this close to whatever you're cooking with, like your grill or your oven. So the company has included a couple of magnets to, you know, if you want to store it right there, or you can just put it on the sur whatever surface, but you can also use the magnets to store it away. Kind of like sticking it next to your microwave or the side of your fridge or something. All right, we're outside doing the Bluetooth range test for the Meter 2 Plus. It's sitting at the end of my deck right there, and there's the block as well. The block is actually the communicator between uh, the probe where it, which is sitting in the meat and the phone or whatever device you're connected to your iPad or whatever it is. But right now it is sitting there and we're about three feet away. It shouldn't have any problems, but I'm sure you're curious how far these things uh, stay connected. I'm going to walk from the back of my house towards the side. And if you're a viewer of my other channel, Gear Up, I do this all the time. It's a consistent test. It's not scientific, but it's consistent enough that you can watch videos back to back and see how they perform in real life. 
in a repeatable situation. Where I'm standing right now is around 25, 26 feet away from the probe and the phone is still staying, uh, saying it's still connected. So that's a good sign. Um, and now we're past a couple walls. It's still saying connected. My wife has mentioned that it has disconnected pretty quickly in under like 30 feet. And now we're around, around like 45. Still no problems. It's still showing connected. That's pretty good actually. So you see where I'm standing right now? It's around 65 feet away from the probe. And I just got a lost connection right there. You see that? So um, that's not bad at all. And this is excluding Wi-Fi. So if you include the Wi-Fi connectivity, the switch over should be pretty quick, but I'm not testing that because that is so obviously dependent on your router and everything else and where it's located. So that's a really a more subjective thing. Anyways, oh, while I was doing this too, FedEx just dropped this off. I'm excited to test this out next. There is the Go Zero. Um, they sent me a uh, portable power station, but also a fridge for camping or RVs and such slash freezer and something they call a skylight. It's like a outdoor camping light or something that's like huge. Yeah, stay tuned for that review. So anyways, uh, let's head back to the studio. I'll tell you what, Meter has done their homework with the app. It looks nice and it's also pretty easy for beginners and pros alike to pair and go or pick up where they left off with their favorites customize their notifications and alerts and there's tons to play with i tell you what and also post things like their cooks on their socials if they wanted to so anyways once you're set up with what you're cooking the simple but effective info gauge as i like to call it gives you the important stats like temps times and all that diving deeper you can access to things like charts where you can add notes to any stage for future reference plus one of my favorite screens and it's the simplest of things guys being able to see what each sensor is reading nearly in real time down to the tens of a degree is super useful. And I geek out over data like that. Making quick adjustments can be done as well by tapping the target temperature. And once you do that, you just let the app recalculate the stages. You can also share the cook live with the web link function. Basically, you send a link of the cook as it's happening, viewable on a web browser. So potentially you could project it onto a big screen TV somewhere else in the house. As a simple cooking gadget, I'm almost convinced that this thing sometimes is indestructible, even though obviously it's not. But the fact that the probe is designed to survive a thousand degrees over an open flame, being dunked in a deep fryer for crying out loud, and then when you're done, you just toss it in the dishwasher, yeah, I bet you can't do that with these. Another positive is monster battery life. So our household has essentially used the Meter 2 Plus over the past couple of months, often enough for me to mathematically figure out that the battery should last around 90 weeks, which works out to about one and three quarters of a year on one single AAA battery, no less. Yeah, mind blown, guys. Of course, the most important bit is how well the Meter 2 Plus functions as a cooking tool. And straight up, guys, it's really hard to fault. It results in food that is cooked, and this is the key part here, consistently over and over again. Now, without any monitoring tools, I can cook a steak the way I like it, medium rare, maybe like 65-70% of the time. And that's because either I don't properly account for meat thickness, or I space out during the browning part, or sometimes I just don't let it rest long enough because like, I don't know about you, when I see cooked meat just sitting around, I have to have it. The meter, on the other hand, takes much of that guesswork out of the equation. It guides and prompts you through each cook phase like almost telepathically sometimes, and even warns you if there's a flare up happening in say your grill. Now, I will straight up say that for most folks, this probe is probably overkill. You'd be fine with something like the Meter Gen 1 or something similar. And even though the Meter 2 Plus now has six sensors lining in here, taking stock of almost the entire cross section of your meat and very conveniently displaying temps down to the tens, which in turn stops you from wondering whether the temperature is at the tail end or the top end of a degree, which is really useful. I still found that cheaper double sensor probes like this one works perfectly fine. But that being said, having that many sensors and information has its benefits though. 
all that extra data provided by the Meter 2 Plus is like a dream for data crunchers or budding slash professional meat masters who want to know what every strata of their cooking meat is doing every single minute because it's a source of joy for them. You know who you are. Still, as a beginner myself, I've been impressed at how the probe app combo works so well, so consistently with almost every dish or entree we've thrown at it so far. Like while cooking her famous balsamic pork loin, my wife decided to trust the probe and the meter apps recommended target temperature as well as rest times. And the pork was even more succulent and tender than before. Fried chicken is the other thing that came out better than I expected. While the cook time based on the app's estimates was nearly identical to my usual unaided tried and true method, the probe added extra time for resting, which again, if you remember, I usually take for granted. And that made a huge difference with helping the chicken build flavor and allowing the skin to crisp up even more. Oh, and the other day we had meatloaf for dinner and it came out moist and tasty. Although We'll probably try a longer preset next time because we like our meatloaf firmer, like a dense cake rather than like a piece of flan, which what it came out to, and that's really not the fault of the meter. And ultimately, that's the beauty of the meter. You basically can rinse and repeat the same fantastic food output over and over again, like between the meter sensors working in tandem with the app and the loads of customizable notifications that prompt or warn you. It really takes the stress out of the meat part. You know what I mean? Especially if you have lots of other things to do or going on in that you have to deal with in the kitchen or you have other chores to do in or outside the house. Now, a big part of why this probe is so good at what it does, and it goes without saying that the temperature accuracy on this thing is pretty spot on. Plus minus 0.7, 0 0.8 degrees variance at most times. And it's so good that at a pinch, you could use this as a fever thermometer. It was within like 0.6 degrees of a medical grade thermometer lying around that I tested with for crying out loud. And I mean, it takes forever for this thing to change temperature or for it to show up on the app. And with the sharp end, I wouldn't recommend you sticking this up your butt. I think a couple of tweaks need to be made so that the meter can work more as a stronger social tool. And I'm not talking about getting more followers on the company's Insta feed or the share your cook function in the app. What I mean is, well, two things. Firstly, the Meter 2's Bluetooth 5.2 module can't store multiple pairings. So as it is, the probe can only pair to one user at a time. Like I tested this out, when I created a new Meter account and tried to pair the same probe, it wouldn't let me. It says I had to unpair it first and then repair it again. Guys, I honestly don't mind sacrificing a little battery life for Bluetooth multipoint capability. That would be super awesome. Right now, the only way my wife uses the probe on her phone is when logged into my account. Secondly, the probe could use some kind of admin, family, or guest share capability, some way for others to piggyback or tag team a cook together. Say I start something on a grill and I have to run out to run some errands and it would be cool if I can push the cook off to my buddy or my son's phone to manage things from there, including making adjustments on the app or whatever they want to do. The closest thing we have right now, and it's really close to being perfect, but it's not there yet, is the web link function. But that doesn't allow anyone else except you to change any meter settings. And that's it for the negatives, really. And if I really had to nitpick, the storage slash charging dock here has really sharp corners. It looks aesthetically amazing, but don't try dropping this on your foot. It really hurts. Thanks to its ease of use, the well-sorted algorithm and app experience obviously made by enthusiasts and lovers of food, the extra sensors as well and the strengthened materials, the Meter 2 Plus has warmed its way into our hearts as well as our stomachs with consistently and deliciously cooked food. And for this, it has earned its spot in TNTT's Gadget of the Year. But that being said, I'm not going to say it's worth the price of entry because, you know, objectively, nothing it does really helps you recoup 130 bucks. In fact, you know, with this, you'll probably be spending more on ingredients and better cuts of meat for, you know, experimental purposes. But subjectively, if you can swing it or if you just want to treat yourself, this can help you feel like a next level chef every time you use it. So in a way, like delicious food, this probe is a feel good kind of thing. And in that sense, it's worth every penny. 
Well, that was a long video. I've talked enough and I'm sure you've heard enough. So thank you so much for your patience and for being here. And if you'd like to see more content like this, the only way to get brands to send me more stuff like this is for you to subscribe and like and comment nicely down below, guys. Don't just watch and mooch and disappear. Subscribe and show your support and reshare this with your friend and help us grow this channel like crazy. Thank you so much. Remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what? The world needs it more than ever and it starts with you. I love you all very much. God bless.